Hello, this is Alex Handluff. I'm here on the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio, which played a really important role in the history of the environmental movement. We're going to learn more from Jennifer Greiser, the Director of Natural Resources at Cleveland Metro Parks. Let's go find out. Well, Jennifer Greiser, thank you for meeting me down here on the Cuyahoga. Uh, just to start, I, I think it would be great to understand the history of the place. Uh, this is an important river, kind of a, you know, a watershed moment for the environmental movement and, and what's your knowledge of where we are and, and what happened and why this is so important? Yeah, well, thank you for that question and the interest in the history of the river. We Clevelanders are really proud of, of where we are now um, because this really was, um, I, I guess you could say, ground zero of the environmental movement. We were talking about that moment when, when this river really became more than just the river in Cleveland and this industrial area, and it was on the national stage. And it was Carl Stokes, the mayor. I'd love to hear that story, especially from someone who's spent a lot of time here and really seen that firsthand. Thanks. Well, it's important for us to remember that it wasn't just the Cuyahoga River that was burning. The industrialized Great Lakes, the Buffalo River, Detroit River, they had fires on the rivers too. So why did Cuyahoga River become known as this kind of birthplace of the environmental movement? And that really was be just kind of an instance of timing. Um, Cleveland had just elected its first African-American mayor, Carl Stokes, and Time Magazine was in town covering that. Kind of had the last fire on the Cuyahoga River happen around the same time. And Mayor Stokes wanted to have a press conference on the banks of the Cuyahoga River to say no more. This is not acceptable. Um, we need to do something about this. And that really kind of started that. The article in Time Magazine brought it to the national stage. And um, then discussion started in Congress. And uh, then you saw the next year, establishment of US EPA in 1970, the first Earth Day, April 22nd of 1970 and then Clean Water Act in 1972. And, and here we are in 2022 celebrating the 50th anniversary. And you, sa you said the last fire this makes, me s makes it seem like there were other fires, not just in other locations, but even on the Cuyahoga. Right, so um, there were multiple fires on, on multiple rivers. The Cuyahoga had 13. So it was this repeat problem, and it wasn't the impressiveness of the fire in 69. It really was the fact that you had um, Mayor Stokes elected as mayor and um, Time Magazine in town covering that. This convergence of all these things really adding up. Yes, yeah. it's phenomenal. Clearly things have changed since those fires. Things have gotten better. Um, how much has that progressed? What, what has been the work on really transforming this place? The work on the restoration, the revitalization of the Cuyahoga River is really from so many entities. I, I, I feel a little humbled here to be representing all of the hard work, decades and decades of work of, of so many different agencies. Um, from, you know, industry standards needing to change and um, then also wastewater standards water quality standards. So it took um, the private industry recognizing, OK, how can we innovate? What can we do so that we are not polluting the Cuyahoga River? Um, and I think it's a testament to the fact that we still have industry next to the river, but we also have improvements in the ecological system as well. And, and with your role at Cleveland Metro Parks and also the, the Cuyahoga area of concern, What's been your role in catalyzing that work? Well, um, the Cuyahoga River Area of Concern um, has a local advisory committee. We represent a variety of agencies, um, nonprofit organizations, private industry, and we have members of the public as well. And um, so we are the local voice to continue to encourage the state and federal governments to um, invest in improving these areas and and it's a wonderful partnership um, it really shows how local state and federal government can work together um, just recently we have seen investments in the multi-million dollars on these large restoration projects along the river uh, so things have changed there's there's specific projects that you're talking about what are they are we are we helping the fish are we helping the birds the the 
erosion on the banks, soil quality, or is it everything? It is a little bit of everything, um, and it really depends on the project. So um, the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District is investing $3 billion over 25 years to um, just dig these large, deep tunnels to capture the, the, the sewage. Um, they're also doing a huge project with green infrastructure and capturing stormwater. So that um, is going to be a game changer here. Um, but then we also have projects right on the Cuyahoga River. Um, and that's really kind of started um, with some dam removals that are very beneficial to fish. Um, the dams prevent the fish from Lake Erie getting upstream. And that began in um, 2005, was one of the first removals in the city of Kent. Um, then there were removals in Mon Monroe Falls and Cuyahoga Falls. And just in um, 2020 was the latest dam removal. That was in Cuyahoga Valley National Park. It's called the Canal Diversion Dam. I was just there on Tuesday, um, see how the river was doing and it looks great. How many, are there more dams that need to be removed or have all of them been, been removed? So uh, there is, and it's a doozy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Gorge Dam, also in Cuyahoga Falls, is, um, it is a $150 million project. Uh, and that's not just the removal of the dam, but it's really the sediment built up behind it. Mm. So over a million cubic yards of sediment need to be removed. And, um, and it's not toxic. There, there is some um, hazardous material to it, um, but that's kind of the good news because we can bring in funding that deals with hazardous chemicals, but it doesn't have to be taken you know, far, far away. So, um, and the, the great news is that um, there has been funding for it. Um, our partners are, are working on solidifying some of the final funding pieces, but um, we could see that dam come down in 2025. And the really cool thing is in that area, it's going to, um, there's already class five rapids in Cuyahoga Falls oh. with those previous dam removals, and this will extend those rapids. So, um, you know, those adventure seekers out there, um, they'll be able to come and, and have some fun. And that's really one of the cool things about the Cuyahoga River. You can go lazy style and get a tube and float along it, but then you can get crazy with the rapids too.